Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In the last video series, we saw how we can leverage machine learning method, unsupervised machine learning method to do anomaly detection or fault detection in process, in industrial processes. But in this video series, we will see how we can do supervised machine learning because in this uh, data set that we are using right now, we have corresponding fault labels as well. There are 20 different fault labels and uh, we are going to use those label data to do supervised machine learning and to isolate the fault. That means the root cause analysis of different kind of fault using the data we have already obtained. So let's see how we can do that. But for the first video, we'll do some exploratory data analysis on our uh, data set and then we will train various machine learning algorithm and then we will choose the algorithm that performed the best on the default uh, parameter default hyperparameters and then we'll do some hyperparameter search in order to enhance its performance finally we'll see the performance how it uh, uh, how it be behaves how what is the result what is the accuracy and uh, in the next uh, upcoming video series, we'll try to leverage deep learning and see if it can give us a bit better result compared to the machine learning algorithm. We'll come into the code. First, we'll import some library. Then we'll import the data set. Mind you, for this, uh, this uh, video series, I'm only going to use the training data set. We can also do the testing, but it takes a lot of time and they, they are like pretty huge data sets. So that's why I'm just going to stick with the training data. I'm concatenate the bold fault free and faulty data set into a single data set. So here the fault number means which number of fault was introduced. There are 20 different type of fault number which belongs to 0 to 20, basically 21 different type of fault number. Simulation run refers to for each fault number there were 500 simulations runs done and each simulation run lasted for 500 uh, samples so accordingly that and the fault was introduced in the faulty, uh, faulty cases after sample number 20 and after that these are all the sensor readings we have you can see that the sensor reading has a various range so this the first sensor reading has a range between 0 0.25 somewhere like that whereas uh, the second sensor has 3000 so there is a big difference between the range of the sensor values so totally we have total 52 sensor measurements and the rest three are the metadata or the how the data has been uh, organized so first of all we'll do a basic summary of our data set but i'm only taking simulation run one that means for simulation run one, I'll take all the fault cases and all the sample also. So basically I have 500 samples from each fault cases cases, and I'm doing that for simulation run one. Then I'm only choosing the uh, sensor measurement and then I'm just doing a pandas uh, describe function. So I get the description, the statistical uh, description for each and every sensor value so what i can gain from here the one thing i can gain here is to just look at mean and standard deviation here i can see the mean is 0 0.26 and standard deviation is 0 0.14 that means the standard deviation is very comparable like very uh, large compared to uh, mean because if you see that means this uh, this value has uh, very good influence because Imagine if there is a feature which does not change even for different type of fault. That means that feature has no significant no significance when we do fault isolation or fault classification. For example, let's see this one. This one has a mean of uh, 3661, but standard deviation is very low compared to this. This mean and this standard deviation, this mean and this standard deviation have a very low range. It, we can say that this one stays fairly constant compared to this one. Also, what we can see here, here the mean is 26 and the standard deviation is 0 0.23. That means it barely, barely changes. 
this one also xmea6 here the mean is 43 42 and the standard deviation is 0 0.27 so it this this kind of uh, this kind of features have barely any effect in doing fault classification because they are not discriminant they have very less uh, they uh, they are very less affected by different types of fault because uh, remember this data this data set contains to 20 different type of fault so as the fault changes the sensor value should also change or whichever sensor value will change they that will give us more information on how to discriminate between different type of type of classes classes of faults this one xme9 is the worst it has barely any uh, it has a mean of 120 and standard deviation is 0 0.07 which means it barely changes stays fairly constant and coming to like this one the the xmb3 it has a mean of 30 and standard deviation of 90 that means it changes rapidly with different type of fault and it can give us very good information of how to discriminate different type of fault all right so that idea we got from here that was just the first type of exploratory data analysis Next, let's put a box plot for different for all type of sensor data. So this function just does that. It just plot the box plot for different type of all, uh, different type of sensor data. For the first sensor data, we see the mean is about uh, 0 0.25 or something, and then it ranges from here. There are some like uh, we saw XMEA9, right? See here XMEA9. If if you see here. Yeah, we see that the mean is around 120.4 and uh, the range is very fair, very narrow. That means it it lives in a very smaller range. All the data and they are fairly constant, we can see. Let's go to the next stage of exploratory analysis. We'll do KDE plot or kernel density estimation plot. What it does, it, it basically uh, plots the histogram and then puts a probability distribution on top of the histogram so we can clearly visualize and here what is happening is uh, we have uh, data equal to data frame and uh, x refers to different uh, features different feature or different sensor values and the color refers to the fault number and then i'm coloring i'm assigning different colors according to the fault number here so let's see the first one so here, here we can see that most of the fault types are aligned here align, uh, most of the fault types are superimposed on one another that means xma1 is for most fault scenario is not discriminative but look at this distribution and this distribution using only xma1 we can totally discriminate between all these faults and this fault you understand because we, we can just threshold here and it's a very uh, class discriminative like that we see which type of fault are class discriminative here also we can see that xmea7 here also you can see that the xmea7 is pretty class discriminative here that is one fault is very far away from the rest of the faults yeah xmea11 is pretty class discriminative yeah i think this is the highest class discriminative fault which we also saw previously here this one xmea where the mean is 30 and standard deviation is 19 that means it carries a lot of information about different type of fault so if we see the same xmea3 here we can see that different type of fault have uh, we can clearly distinguish different type of fault just using xmea3 so that is a good thing this this is like an important feature for, for us and the in the next stage of uh, exploratory analysis we'll see the correlation plot so first i'll get the data frame then i'll data dot uh, cor that will give me the correlation matrix but i don't need the entire i just need the bottom triangular matrix so what i will do i'll just mark the upper triangular matrix and plot the uh, plot the rest of the correlation plot and it looks something like this so what we can see here is uh, yeah there are some features see here xmea13 has very high correlation with uh, with let's say xmea7 so either one feature if we have in our system that will be enough either we can have xmea13 or xmea7 it also uh, x 
MEA 11 is also very highly correlated with uh, the seventh feature. So like that. Now our task is to remove the highly correlated feature and keep only one. If two features are highly correlated, then we'll keep only one of them in our data set. So what we can do? Let's see. So for, we'll calculate the correlation matrix here. Then we calculate the upper triangular matrix. And then we'll delete the column which has more than 90 more than 90 percent correlation so after that we get two drop is the number of uh, name of the feature is the list of the name of the features that we can delete which has more than 90 percent correlation with some other feature so these features we got if we remove them from our data set also we can have a very good estimate of the uh, we can still clearly uh, explain most of the variance all right. In the next stage, what I'm doing is I'm obtaining five simulation run because there are 500 simulation run and taking each of them will take a lot of time. That's why I'm only taking five simulation run. And uh, why I'm taking DF sample greater than 20? Because only after the 20th sample, the faults were introduced. And uh, before 20th samples, the fault were wrongly labeled. That's why I'm taking samples greater than 20. Next, I'm doing re reduced data. After I'm from this data, I'm dropping the highly correlated columns using two drop. I'm getting the reduced data format. And I am neglecting three different type of fault. Fault 3, fault 9, and fault 15. I'll explain this more. Why I'm neglecting this fault. Or why, why I am not including them in my uh, training data in the later stage. But for the short answer is they are, it's very hard for them to discriminate from the normal case. I'll show that in the curve in the next day. So finally, my reduced data looks something like this. Finally, I have 41 columns. I, I have uh, 41 column and 38 are the sensor values. These are the sensor values and these are just the organization of the data. 